fully grown. For this adventure, we will be looking at... The Land Before Time 4, Journey Through the Mists. Again, we get the segments about long, long, long ago and some weird ass looking dinosaurs and what things were like. But this time they kind of expect us to know the whole story about the dinosaurs and them coming on Earth. Now they're saying, oh, before there were states and crap, there were dinosaurs, but the land was changing. Dinosaurs. You know, part of me does wonder if that's Chomper's father. And those creatures that they're chasing or that this T-Rex is chasing look to be Gallimimus. Gallimimuses? Gallimimer. What's the plural? Plural for octopus is octopi. Pegasus. Pegasa. Pegasi. Gallimimus. Gallimimai. Gallimimai. Also, take a look at the design for the Gallimimers. Mimey, mimeys. That one looks, look, that one looks scared shitless. They really did, <laughs> they really did a good job capturing the fear on the poor thing's face. His face looks like it's melting off with fear. Anyway, you can see that these things kind of have this tan color with these red stripes on them. And when you look at the Gallimimer from Jurassic Park, they look the same. They look like dinosaurs who are tall, ostrich-like with tan color and some reddish brownish stripes on the back. Just look at that. Right here, you can see it. And I don't put it past them taking inspiration because Jurassic Park came out in 1993 and Land Before Time 4 came out December 10th, 1996. You can't fool us. The plants and the animals were beginning to transform. Not gonna lie, when I first heard that watching this, I thought that I was gonna watch Little Foot and his friends start growing up or growing things out of their orifices. I don't know what I was expecting, but when he said transform, that's the first thing that ran through my head. I don't know why it would, because evolution doesn't work that way, but just telling you, just being completely honest at the stupidity and level of knowledge I had at the time. But then he said it's all good, because in the Great Valley, everything basically remained the same. <laughs> I love when Sarah does that. See, they can eat anywhere they are. They don't particularly need to go home for dinner. Sarah notices that Littlefoot's missing. Littlefoot is having fun with this dragonfly who apparently sounds like most mumble rappers today. While Littlefoot is playing, he almost falls off a cliff. Surprising how many times that happens in these movies. How many of them almost literally leapt to their deaths. I mean, for living in the place that you live, you would think that you would pay more attention to where you're going, Littlefoot. One who tries to off himself every time he has to take a sip of water. After almost falling to his death, he asks audibly who they are. The longings in the distance. That his friends materialize behind him. His grandparents tell him that they're his cousins. Or their cousins. I understand everyone took this to mean that they're literal cousins. But but I think the way that they're saying it is kind of the same way humans say that chimpanzees are their cousins. They're not your literal cousins, even though kind of you're related, literally, but cousins in the form we know it as, they're not. A chimpanzee's parents are not your uncle and aunt. So that's what I'm going to take it to mean, because I understand there's a lot of stuff surrounding this movie that people took an issue with. Yes, we saw them too, Littlefoot. Grandma, why are you washing my face? Delicious. Oh, Grandma. Grandma claims that they're gonna go meet their visitors and he wants to look nice, even though it doesn't look like he got any cleaner for what I could see. His grandparents also tell him that that herd is a migrating herd, means that they go from one place to another. Littlefoot said he wouldn't like that because he likes being in the Great Valley. Of course he does, lazy ass. Then something strange happens. While Megor and Gourmet are following their grandchild to go meet their visitors, Gourmet gets a little bit lightheaded. Kids? I'm sure they do. Oh. Grandpa! Are you alright? Damn woman, you suck a mean dick. Sorry, little foot. Or may stop oh my god. <laughs> I am the one the way you're trying to Gee golly, Grandpa. You guys are gross. But after Grandpa starts feeling lightheaded, he convinces his family that he's fine. In the most unconvincing way. It is pretty cute how Migor seems to be really concerned with him. You could tell how worried she is. And he's like, I'm fine, Grandma. I'm fine. Really? I'm really freaking not. Like, guys could be bleeding through their freaking dick and they won't see the doctor. Is that Sarah? Looking like a thick Twinkie. That cannot be Sarah. Look how big she is in comparison. So that dude over there, that means that Sarah is going to get quite large before she changes the color of what she's supposed to look like. They meet this old matriarch dinosaur that looks like a sack of potatoes, and she is no nonsense. She just keeps asking him a whole bunch of questions like, is your land okay? How much land do you have? Is it changing? Do you guys wipe? Do you have Charmin? Like, all these different questions that are kind of sort of intruding, but, you know, grandma and grandpa take it in stride. They're like, no, we're good. So weird to see them interact with other long necks, because I'm sure that they do in this valley. I don't know if they're 
other apatosauruses in the Great Valley, per se, but we haven't seen them actually talk face-to-face -face with other dinosaurs that look like them until this movie. Even in Land Before Time 1, when they had their daughter, they kind of hung around in the back and didn't really say much. It was all the mother. The matriarch Longneck is like, okay, so you say it's nice here, but who knows how long that will last. What's that stuffy old Longneck mean by, who knows how long that will last? Shh. Hmm. Bitch. Bitch! The bird has roamed far and wide, and everywhere things are changing. <gasps> <laughs> it just looks weird. It just looks weird. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna try and keep it together. I don't know why you always fall apart with these movies, but I'm gonna try and keep it together. <clears throat> Let's move on. Let me get a glass of water. Hold on. Oh, I did have one. Okay. Let's continue. Ah, I think I think I'm good. Peaks on end. She tells a story about how water just kept falling from the sky. Look, it's the Struthamimuses! And there's specifically two of them that look like Strut and Ozzy from the last movie. Or the one before that. They have two different color eyes too. I don't know, it might be them, might not be. But we do see a herd of Struthamimuses flitzing through this area as well. Anyways, they said a whole bunch of new animals came along and this long neck almost breaks its freaking feet and neck. The old one says that weird animals that come from the ocean or wherever start coming onto land. And I'm pretty sure this thing is snacked on a few necks. So everything got so inhabitable that they had to leave the area because it now became the land of the mists. Right there's a tag. You can see a young long neck right in there. The old one's like, listen, we're not staying here. Thanks for the invite, but you can, you can come with us if you want. Um, Grandpa, we're not going to migrate, are we? Of course not, little foot. The Great Valley is our home. Why did he say it like that? He knows what the word means now. His grandparents already told him what the word is. Why is he drawing it out? I think that was done for the benefit of the young audience. Littlefoot's friends, Ducky, and all the others are so happy, and they all go around saying how much they would miss him. Spike would miss him. He asked if Petrie would miss him. I wonder how it feels to have a neck that long and have someone lick it like that. I know, off topic. He asked Sarah if she would miss him and she has the cutest response ever. Sarah does not like being vulnerable. She's not all touchy feely. She doesn't like people seeing her weak. There goes Uncle Mario in the background. So Willow would ask if she would miss him. Would you miss me? Well, I... Ooh. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. I'm not telling. Bitch, I hope the fuck you do, you Then Sarah's all playful, saying that if you really want to know the answer, you gotta catch her, and she runs off. While Littlefoot is going after her, he hears giggling. We get one of those scenes that looks straight like a scene from out of Bambi. <laughs> Seriously, look at the way it plays out. Littlefoot's going along with his friends, and then he hears giggling, and then there's some pretty blue female eyes in the flowers or the bushes nearby. Just look at the scene real quick. Me catch you, Sarah. <laughs> You'd better run fast. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that you, Sarah? This is Allie, who then falls out of her hiding spot log above from him in her Spider-Man position. Then she gives him her bedroom eyes, ends up pecking him on the face, and then he gets all weird and forgets his friends exist. That is exactly how the Bambi scene with Flower the skunk played out too. It just put me in mind of that. After the others find Sarah, they all wonder where Littlefoot is. Then they hear him laughing with her. Not another Littlefoot. She's a girl. This is my new friend, Allie. Hello, Allie. But Allie acts really weird around them, and we come to realize that Allie's a freaking racist. She's like, oh my god, what are these things that look different from us? Holy shit. Hi, Allie. Me, Petrie. And I'm Sarah, a three-horn, of course. <gasps> What's the matter, Allie? I'm... I'm afraid. Wow. <laughs> He's so 
ignorant. It's not totally her fault because her parents never gave her that exposure, but it's freaking hilarious. She is still a character in my stories, by the way. She's like totally hot now and her and little foot are never a thing. Her and one of my original characters are an on and off thing. Had some really horrible drama stuff that happened. Allie has a very rough upbringing. Anyways, the point is Sarah and her didn't really get along very well. Even though things are strained between them, they become kind of like frenemies. But there was a reason for her background. It was just kind of hilarious and insulting. But then Sarah and Petrie and Spike and Ducky are like, we can be very scary. Honest, they're really, really nice. Little foot, they're not long necks like us. Ah, uh, them is not white people like us. Hey, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Nobody asked you how a bitch ass thing. You better shut the fuck up before I knock your fucking head off your shoulders, old ugly ass bitch. Stupid ass bitch. Nigga, I'll kick your fucking heart out your chest, nigga. You better watch the fuck out. After all of that, Allie straight up insults Littlefoot's friends and right in front of them too says that shit. Like they're not standing right there. Like they don't have feelings. I'm sorry, everyone. I can't play now. What the? Bitch, are you okay? Sarah comes right out and says it. She's like, fine. We don't want to be her friend either. She's a stuck up. So scared. Huh. She's not scared. She's stuck up. Who needs her? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Who need her? Good for you, Petrie. I can tell just looking. <laughs> Just looking at the past movies with Petrie, because Sarah's father is very prejudiced. And Petrie doesn't take that shit at all. He does not do racist. Like, everybody else is like, okay. And Petrie always has this face like, you did not just say that to me, bitch. Don't hang around with long necks, big faces, and spike tails. I don't know why that's racist, but that's... That's, that's racist, I don't know. So Petrie doesn't do that, and respect to him. He's not my favorite character, but I can totally understand why he's like, all right, miss me with that bullshit then. Take that long ass neck of yours and go strangle yourself six times. And seriously, it's kind of easy to understand why some people would hate Allie and why Sarah would hate little, uh, Littlefoot's friend Allie, because she's like, I gotta go, I can't, I gotta go home now, can't play with y'all because you're not like me. And immediately, when this friends, I just want you to see how messed up this is. His friends are walking away, and he's like, all right, you know, I guess. I mean, there's a hot piece of, no, I'm not even going to go there. Anyway, there was a girl long neck like me. I haven't played with a long neck since, geez, I don't even think there's any other long necks in the valley, which is weird, but whatever. And he really wants Allie to go along with his new friends. So his friends are walking away. And seconds after they go ahead of him and he kind of hangs back just a little bit to look back, she calls him over to play with him alone. Are you coming, Littlefoot? I... I guess so. <sighs> Littlefoot, I'm over here. Wow, you racist bitch. <laughs> some messed up nonsense <laughs> even when i was younger i was like girl really did you really just do that like you want to pull this guy he's these are his friends they've been his friends you want to pull him away from his friends that's a great way to make them hate you but she doesn't care about that she has never known anything else if all you've ever done is kept to your own kind and other kind treats you a certain way and they stick to their kind then it's gonna be quite weird to see another one of your kind mingling with other people that are not but if you have an open mind you'll be like well why is there something that i don't know let me get to know these people because kids like ally are only taught how to be prejudiced sarah was taught by her father to be prejudiced. She was specifically told, like that little clip from the other video I did a review on, that she's not supposed to play with certain people because they're bad influences or they're freaking stupid. Allie was probably told the same thing with her herd. Did you change your mind? Do you want to play with me and my friends? Ew, no, they're beneath us, bitch. What are you doing? Well, but uh, I think it's very clear that I want you alone. <sighs> ah, gee. Then she starts making all these weird-ass alien faces. 
to change the subject of her not wanting to play with his friends. But it works! He, for some reason, Littlefoot's got that simp game on very strong. DISGUSTING! Sarah gets annoyed seeing Littlefoot playing with Allie. And I kinda understand where she's coming from. She tells the others that if he'd rather play with that girl, then he's not her friend. Half the time when Allie's looking at Littlefoot, she looks like she wants to freaking smash. I don't know why. It's something that everybody has noticed and they're like, ew. <laughs> Something tells me Allie's not as innocent as Littlefoot and his friends. And I can kind of understand probably why that would be because in the wild, I call it the wild, but let's be honest, anybody who lives in the Great Valley is probably sheltered. The younger Longnecks are forced to grow up a lot faster. Allie probably has a better chance at surviving on the outside walls of the Great Valley than Littlefoot and his friends. Even though by some stroke of miraculous luck, all the stuff that should have happened to Littlefoot and his friends, they're still alive. Having fun and saying the word friends, Littlefoot remembers his friends and the look on Allie's face is like, no! Oh, don't leave me! Since Littlefoot can't find his friends, he thinks his grandparents are gonna be very worried about him. He goes back home and all the long necks are gathered in a circle. And we know what it's gonna be because earlier his grandfather was kind of hoo-hoo, you know? And now everyone's like, tsk, 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 it doesn't look good. And then unfortunately we get the sad scene out of the movie. It is so freaking sad because you don't want anything to happen to Gourmet. And he looks so innocent just lying there. Migor is sad and she's wondering what's going on. Nobody knows what's wrong with him until the old Longnick steps in. Your grandpa is very ill, Littlefoot. Well, he'll get better, won't he? I don't know, Littlefoot. Some dinosaurs do, and some don't. Aww. Oh, poor Littlefoot. Look, I was crying right along with him. It is so sad. You gotta understand, too. Littlefoot lost his mother. She saved his life time and time again, but especially at that point in time, she saved Littlefoot and Sarah's life and she died in front of Littlefoot. He lost his mother when she passed away in front of him and he was depressed for some time, not knowing whether or not he would find his grandparents. Then at the end of the first movie, he finally finds him and that's the last family he has left. And then his only father figure in his life is dying. The old stuffy long neck is like, I've seen the sickness and there's only one way to cure it. The golden petals from the night flower. Migor asks who was help her and everyone's like nah bitch i'm out none of us are going back there the old one tells little foot that it's too dangerous and then everyone's like all right see you good night good luck Allie is like super clingy with little foot and as her mother takes her away she's like isn't there anything we can do and her mom's like no bitch no <laughs> even if there is something we could do we're not doing it we're not going back there almost lost our lives trying to leave the place why would we go back into it for an old ass long neck that's near death's bed anyway she didn't say all that but that's probably what she was thinking then it's already sad enough and then gourmet says this this, oh God, I hate when this happens, when someone starts talking like this and you're like, no, don't say that. But he knows he's dying. Littlefoot? Yes, Grandpa? Littlefoot, I want you to promise that if anything happens to me... But Grandpa, nothing is going to happen. I'm going to take care of you. Oh my god, poor thing. Oh, it's so sad. Oh my god. This whole scene right here, man. This just, god damn it. This is supposed to be fun. Gourmet tells Littlefoot, look, just promise me that if anything happens to me, that you'll take care of your grandma. She's not as young as she used to be, and you will need to go with the herd. He's probably doing this for Littlefoot's benefit, but I don't know what the logic is there. I think in his mind, he's thinking, look, naturally, long necks are migrators. So it's best for grandma to have a support structure and family and people to help take care of her because they take care of each other. Even though it doesn't seem as though they do because one of their kind is sick and nobody wants to go back and help them. He's not a direct member of their herd, but still. They weren't willing to lift a nail to help you. Why? What makes you think they would help grandma if she was in trouble? Also, isn't it like way more super dangerous to be on the go out in the wild with other sharp teeth and stuff? Isn't the safest thing to do to leave Migor and Littlefoot in a retirement area when Littlefoot's old enough to go off and get some ass? It doesn't really make any sense. Grandma is not at the age to be migrating here and there. The old one is pretty strong and she's probably been doing that her whole life. Granted, Littlefoot's grandparents have been doing it for a long time before they settled down to the Great Valley, but now that they have settled down, they don't exercise as much as they used to. The minute that she steps out there with Littlefoot, she'll freaking die. And I know that the herds have this thing where if there is the weakest, 
then they just gotta do what they gotta do. We gotta leave them behind. It is what it is. If grandma's sick, ain't nobody going into the Great Valley or wherever there's medicine to go fetch it for her. He probably doesn't want her to be alone because there's a whole bunch of racist dinosaurs in the Great Valley. I still don't think it's the best thing for her to constantly be worrying about Littlefoot. After all, she does make some friends with some of the other herbivores in the Great Valley. We all must learn to accept what the Great Circle of Life hands us. No. Oh. He wants to stay with his grandfather and help his grandmother watch him. But she says the best thing he could do is to get some rest. Then this is the first time we hear Migor sing. The ever widening circle. It's so sad because she makes sure that Littlefoot's okay, but she's dying inside because the love of her life is dying outside. I know that was very insensitive to say. I'm sorry. He's not sleeping though. He's like, no, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do something. After he can't sleep, he gets up and decides he's gonna find the night flower for his grandfather. I understand why Migor probably didn't go because she doesn't know the way. But I would have straight up asked people like, okay, you can't take me there. Can you direct me as to how to go? I mean, these guys found the Great Valley, a land that they've never been to for like three landscape or landmarks that people told them. And they were somehow able to find it. So I'm pretty sure she could find the Land of Mists with some directions and basic directions at that. Wolfoot goes to Allie's bed. He's like, Allie, come here. I'm not here to get some strange. I really just want to talk to you. So he says, look, uh, can you tell me where this place is? And she's like, it's too dangerous. She basically doesn't want to go back there either and he's like all right i'll figure something out and she's like you're gonna go alone and he's like no i'm gonna ask my friends to come with me this bitch oh my god i don't remember her being this annoying i, I recognized how like clingy she was with littlefoot and how precious she was against his friends but he straight up tells her look i'm gonna get my friends and then she acts all weird will you tell me where to find it i can't littlefoot it's too dangerous the land of mists is filled with horrible monsters. You can't go by yourself. I'm not. I'm going to ask Sarah, Ducky, Petrie, and Spike to go with me. But what about me? <laughs> Yo, this is red flag number 65 on this chick. I swear to God. Then her, her, listen, <laughs> the stuff she says is so annoying. Then she's like, oh yeah, what about me? And he's like, I thought you didn't want to go anyway. I mean, you just said it was too dangerous. Well, I... I didn't think you'd want to come because you, you don't like my friends. And besides, you just said you didn't want to go. I'll go, but, but we can't take the others. Huh? See, if we take them, it'll only slow us down. Wow, bitch. Really? Seriously? I know this is Littlefoot's new friend and he's trying to be nice, but I would have straight out come out and show, told her like, listen, listen, <laughs> he needs her. He needs to know. Because she could just be like, oh, you're going to treat me like that? Okay, well, deuces. Good luck. I hope your grandfather bites the dust sooner or later so he doesn't suffer. She's giving me crazy ex-girlfriend vibes for some reason. I don't know. Hurry, Littlefoot. I know the way. The others don't. We have to go now where the grown-ups will try and stop us. You see how manipulative she is? That entire thing about, no, you can't go. I'm not going to tell you where it is. And he's like, well, okay. She's like, you can't go alone. Oh, I'm not going alone, I'm going with my friends. And then she's like, oh, those things? Those inferior races? Oh, well, I'll, oh, what about me? You're not gonna invite me to go? Oh, well, I thought you didn't want to go. On second thought, I'll go, but don't bring them. Really? Wait, like, listen, if anybody tries to do this with you, relationship-wise, friend-wise, that is a huge red flag. This person will come and try to separate you from your family and your friends, and next thing you know, they're slashing your tires, and now you have a nail gun through your neck. The next morning, the friends notice that Littlefoot isn't there. Sarah already thinks that he's hiding so he can play with that dumb old Allie character. Her words, not mine. And I like how Sarah just straight up <laughs> savagely disses Allie in her absence. Because, I mean, she didn't leave a very good self first impression. And Sarah was trying to be nice earlier on. He's probably just hiding from us so we can play with that dumb old alley. Oh, Littlefoot, I'm afraid. Your friends are so scary. Keep them away. Keep them away. <laughs> I mean... You can't blame them though. Like, Allie acts really freaking salty. And if you have someone that's like incredibly rude to someone's friends and they've been there longer than you have, they know him longer than you have, and you try to do that, that is the greatest way to get picked on. But everything gets serious when they realize that Littlefoot's missing, missing. He's not just hiding from them. He's not here. The grandmother is calling him and they can hear her, the distress in her voice. 
She comes back to check on Gourmet after calling Littlefoot, and she deduces that Littlefoot probably went to go find the Night Flower. Allie is not even sure if this is the right way or not, and understandably, Littlefoot's frustrated with this. But she sees a rainbow watermelon. Sorry, what the frick? What? I don't know why. <laughs> She sees a rainbow waterfall. What the hell? It's probably because of that fruit basket I was eating. And she's like, this is the way. They end up inside a cave. Allie notices dark water, which means that it's really deep and her mom had to carry her across. I guess she's not a great swimmer. While they're kind of having fun exploring the cave and trying to find the place of the night flowers, there's a huge shake. They almost get killed and splattered. Like Allie straight up almost like straight just leaves little fun. She just fly away. I mean, I can't blame her. She's just trying to survive, but she just, she just got out of there. She's like to hell with you little foot. See you later, bro. You're not fast enough. <laughs> she did tell him it was dangerous. Unfortunately, there's this huge cave-in and Littlefoot and Allie are separated. Allie doesn't even know if Littlefoot's okay, and she's like, I'm gonna get help. Guess who she goes to? Littlefoot's friends, who Megor is talking to, and they want to go find Littlefoot. She makes them promise to not, but they cross their legs and their fingers and whatnot, meaning it's okay to lie. The more I think about it, the madder I get. Littlefoot should have asked us to go with him, but no, he wanted to go along with his new friend. Yes, his new friend. See, I, I, <laughs> Petrie. Petrie, I only like Petrie when he's mad or when he's relatable because you can tell Petrie's not cool with that. He's like, this bitch comes along and takes our friend and is racist against us. I'm not down with that sickness. Sarah's so mad about it because she's like, I don't want to go after him. I changed my mind. Everybody's kind of like, really, bro? What, 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 are you, what are you talking about? And I can see where Sarah's coming from because... These are his friends, his real friends, family friends that stuck together with him through thick and thin. And immediately some new smell comes in and he's like, fuck those friends, man. I, I want this new one. Instead of telling Allie, you know what? If you want to play with me, you have to be okay with my friends. He straight up ignores and neglects his friends to go play with Allie. I see where Littlefoot's coming from too, but I guarantee if it was a boy long neck, he would not be acting like that. Allie finds them and I'm surprised she actually knows their names. Sarah chooses not to come along, but the others follow her. But Sarah, you could tell she really does want to go. Littlefoot gets followed and ends up finding a new friend, a huge turtle named Archie. After not seeing him have any teeth, Littlefoot's like, oh, you're not so scary. So we know it's the teeth that make them afraid. It's not like this huge ass turtle can't headbutt you with his head, smush you with a shell, or take his two big ass fins and clap you. Archie tries to help Littlefoot dislodge the rocks from the cave-in. And while all this is happening, we meet Dill and Icky. Icky the bird creature and Dill the crocodile. They start singing some all dolls go to heaven type music about how they don't need each other because the crocodilian can't see very well and the bird needs the jaws to make bigger kills. But after seeing Littlefoot and Archie, they change their mind and decide to work together. friends are on the other side and he hears them but they're having a hard time getting him out and wonderfully sarah comes to save the day we do now little foot in big trouble then what is everyone standing around for sarah <laughs> Instead of helping, Allie just asks Sarah, can I help? And Sarah's like, sure, stay the hell out of my way. And then Allie feels bad. Like Sarah has a reason to be mad at you at this point. You are really salty to her and her friends. And when Sarah is disappointed like that, when you don't leave a good first impression, it is very hard to gain her respect. While everything is going on over there, Littlefoot and the turtle are being hunted by the crocodilian and the bird duo. Archie comes in to help. And I don't know how these guys catch food. Either they catch food that's really stupid or they've been starving all this time. When Sarah rams a big part of the cave in, it manages to hit both of them, and Littlefoot is once again reunited with his friends. Sally, I was afraid that maybe something bad happened to you. I'm sure glad you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Archie wishes them well, and he shows them a shortcut through the cave so they can find the night flowers. Before they exit, Littlefoot tells them the whole story about what happened and how those things had Archie dead to rights and him, and then they all came to the rescue. Sarah, being the proud person that she is, is like, you mean I came to the rescue? Then the others start defending Allie. Petrie mentions that she didn't even want to come at first. He showed us the way. And you know even come with us at first. So? I still got here, didn't I? Seriously, Petrie? Jesus Christ, man. That's all it takes? 
How does my man's manage to fly at all? Do that's your real friends to help you find the night flower in the first place. Okay, so that's when they learn about the night flower. Sorry. I got the word I kind of missed up. But you could see how Allie is super sad, and I don't feel freaking sorry for her. She was rude. There it is. The land of mists. This is the first time I've seen a parallax in this, this franchise. The moving foreground and background, it's pretty cool. Going through this area, Allie tells him, don't get lost, stay pretty close. Because if you get lost in the mists, you stay lost. I guess sound doesn't exist there. Sarah gets a scare when some kind of newt or salamander crawls over her feet. Something slimy touched me. Oh my. Sarah gets shrouded in mist and gets lost. Right as they see her, a stampede of Struthiamimuses, told you they'd show up, Ozzy and his friends, stampede past. Something spooked them and causes them to jump into the water to probably their deaths. And then we see the Passacephalosaurus creatures from the first movie. Don't know why their teeth are sharp. They're not concerned. Wait, what was that? What in the... Why is it shaking its ass like that? Dude. <laughs> Just like in the first movie, they end up smashing heads. Then there's a huge storm. There's an infestation of these rat-like creatures. One of them falls on Spike. The group starts freaking out, but they soon see there's nothing to be afraid of. And Tickles becomes their new friend. Ducky loves him, and this is the first time she's felt tickly things on her head. That's how he got the name Tickles. They ask Tickles if he sees Sarah. I would have personally just screamed out to Sarah, but I guess sound is not an issue here, especially since it's not raining. She's like, I see you guys, I see you, which is, she she didn't. She was looking up into the tree where the freaking rat was. He was probably waving to her. And I guess she concluded that the rat must be friends with the others. Otherwise, I would have been like, who is that? It doesn't matter because Sarah has a really bad day. She ends up falling into the water. Her friends try desperately to throw a vine at her. And I just feel so bad for Sarah. She ends up saving Littlefoot and she almost dies. Everyone is trying with all their weight to pull her because, you know, Sarah's a fat ass. Tickles, what are you doing? Yo, I hate with these characters. Okay, I get it. They're small. You want to feel like you're helping but you're not i know he's intelligent he's just holding on to a piece of thread off of the vine and trying to pull that off there is no leverage you're not doing anything it would have made more sense if you put your feet on Allie's neck and then pull that way rodents are very smart i know he's not stupid but seriously as they pull sarah in icky is like psych and every time these things are about to get them or one of the friends they always just sit there and take their time. Y'all are not really hungry then because when they're right in front of you, you do nothing. I also don't know why the villains of these stories are always so freaking stupid. Honey, no, you hit me. I didn't. That's not a bad idea. No, what did you do that for? Bitch, you're standing on her back. You're... You're literally over her. What in the ass crack? Oh my God. Littlefoot and his friends start throwing rocks overboard and Allie's like, you know what? I'm gonna go save Sarah myself. Littlefoot's like, it's too steep. It's too dangerous. And Allie's like, I got it, Littlefoot, please. I'm a gangster. Who are you talking to? I lived here. Oh, don't worry. I... <laughs> Sorry. It's not funny, but it's just it's just funny the way it looks. She hit that tree so hard that she turned her leg inside out. <laughs> Why am I laughing? It's not funny. Then it <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Seriously, have you ever watched back these things without sound? It is hilarious! Watching it over after you've not watched it for years is one thing, then watching it with no volume is a completely different experience. Because I'm watching this and I'm like, oh shoot, that doesn't look good. And then the bird's like, whoa, <laughs> his eyes. His eyes. <laughs> I don't know why that is so freaking funny. It just, it just hits different. He instructs Dill to go over there where the long neck is. Allie is kind of out of it and everyone's trying to wake her up. Then Icky's like, let me fly over there. And for some strange reason, like an idiot, kamikaze myself into the tree and then this completely wakes Allie up and her immediate thing is to start laughing. I don't know why that was his idea of a t she's a big long neck. Why are what? Why didn't you do that with the others when you had the chance? But with her you do it. It's just so stupid, man. Then Allie's like, I'm totally fine now. Let me hop on this big ass crocodile. And the crocodile for some reason forgets that she can belly roll. She forgets that she can dive under the water to get the long neck off her back look she the whole time she's on the surface of the water like 
Oh, bitch, all you have to do is sink. Sink. It. It's not. No wonder they're going to die. Sarah was terrified. Allie saved her life and she feels all great about it. She's like, mm-hmm. Yes, you can't say shit now, Sarah. Hey, guys. You don't have to worry anymore. Allie and me are friends. What the hell is that? Allie and me are friends. What is that? With my herd moving around so much, I never got to know anyone but other long necks. You still racist. Then they start singing the song, It Takes All Sorts. And she just instantly, all those years of that not wanting to play with your other kind or other kinds, just playing with your kind, just falls away. Sarah and Allie are cool now. I mean, Sarah has to be because Allie basically saved her life. After all of that, they continue on the search for the night flower. <laughs> Then Icky is so annoying. I understand he's the eyes for this crocodilian, but he gets stuck in the tree and he wants her to help him out. So she helps him. And I get why he's kind of paranoid because she can't see very well. Now look what you've done. How are you gonna fix this? How do you think she's supposed to fix it, idiot? You need, you need to be a little bit more grateful. You collided into that tree on your own. I mean, it's not like you could just fly really high and then smash yourself to try and get it off. It's all right, not the hole. I swear, this bird is so freaking ungrateful. Littlefoot and his friends are very tired. They have no idea where the night flowers are. Also, it is weird, but in the night, Allie's skin glows pink. I guess it's just to tell the difference between her and Littlefoot. While they all decide to fall asleep, everyone calls up next to Littlefoot. Sarah goes next to him, and this bitch is like, ahem. Not like she can't lie on the other side, right where she's standing beside Littlefoot. She makes it her mission to come between him and Sarah. I hate how she's standing there like, uh, um, you're in my spot. I don't want you next to him. Thanks, move bitch. And Sarah is being very gracious. Of course Sarah is, because Allie saved her life. So do you notice that Allie is lying down between Littlefoot and Sarah? You can see because she's brightly colored pink. Littlefoot on the right, Sarah on the left, Allie in the middle. Petrie lies on Allie. Whoops! We have a zoom out, and what do we see? A bright pink long neck on the right, which is Allie, now is on the right, Littlefoot's in the middle, and Sarah's on the left. This is where Allie originally should have been, but that's not where she was a few seconds ago when she laid down. She specifically went in the middle, they made a show of it to put her in the middle, and then immediately the next shot. She's laying down on the right. It's a spoof, but it's just something I never noticed till now. As the group is sleeping, the buds that are all around them open up into these golden flowers. It's the night flowers. I'm guessing these are the only golden flowers around, because I was wondering how would they know it's the night flowers? Why is the inside of Ducky's mouth so green? Ducky wakes up the others and lets them know no, hey, the night flowers were, be were here the whole time. So they start picking a whole bunch. What the frick is going on back there? What is Spike doing? Okay, wait, 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 hold on a minute. I gotta, what in the, what is happening with, <laughs> what's happening with Spike and Sarah? They're like losing their shit. <laughs> it's so funny, the stuff you notice when you haven't watched it in a while, but this is good news. So now Littlefoot can take the flowers and go back home. But Icky and his annoying friend won't let that happen. They all get chased by the crocodile, and then Scribbles, or Tickles, has an idea. And his big idea is to take the tail of the crocodile right when he thinks that he's about to bite Petrie, not the crocodile, the bird, so he can bite the crocodile's tail instead, which didn't really feel like a well-thought-out plan to me personally, but whatever. Petrie gets away. As they're running, one of the night flowers drops off, and Ducky takes one for the team. She goes to get it and tries to run away. Unfortunately, she is grabbed by Icky. Now, this is the only time I've ever really liked Petrie because he's like no, no 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 you are not taking my friend and to see him all brave and fight for his friend is really really noble like I said the only time I like Petrie is when he's actually being serious because when he's just being himself he's just like way too over the top and annoying but here he's a badass Go! <laughs> you poor ducky ducky He's gonna get choked out. <laughs> Poor Ducky. She ends up snapping like a rubber band and falls into the water. I don't know why everyone's freaking out. Like, oh no. Poor Ducky. She's a swimmer. She'll be fine. Why are you all freaking out? Petrie goes down to try and find her. And the way she floats to the top is so, so sad. But she's like knocked out. I guess falling from that height hurt her. Oh, 
this is the cutest I've ever seen him look. Not the toes, though. Not the toes. Toes look like freaking pieces of hair from the grudge. Put my friend down! <laughs> really? Petrie can withstand gales, even though with much difficulty, he's able to stay and hang on for at least a little while. Somebody breathes on him, and he goes tumbling into freaking space. I really don't get him sometimes. Icky tells the crocodile friend, like, oh, I got it, and she tosses her into the air. Everyone's like, Ducky, Ducky! And during this entire time, I'm thinking, Ducky would have fallen by now? Like, Ducky's not that light. She's not like a feather. She would have fallen after a while. And within that time, there's all this suspense of her falling. And everyone says her name, and Spike starts stuttering. Ducky! Go after her, Petrie! You can lift her up and fly with her. That's been established so many times. Instead of diving after her, or at least moving her out of the way, you're like, oh no, I guess I missed. I can't do anything. What the hell, man? What is wrong with these people or things? Ducky! He could have gone after her. You see what I'm saying? He could have gone after her. Yo, by the time you finally spoke, my dude, she would have been in that thing's mouth from the beginning. It's so ridiculous how this scene plays out. It's so freaking stupid. At first, I'm like, yeah! And then you grow up and you're like, that makes no freaking sense! Jackie! <gasps> how is she still falling? How high did the crocodile throw her? For her to have been falling that long, she should have gone much farther than where her friends even were. They should have been looking up in the air at her for how long she's been falling. It's not been that... God. <gasps> now this is the part, the other part doesn't make sense. Physics don't exist in this world apparently because when you snap something, it goes wide. It snaps all the way to the other end and then when it starts losing momentum, it goes back into the middle. See, this is how physics works. You you push it all the way or you let it go all the way from the other side, the energy goes out to the other side and, and comes back and then it starts diminishing over time. It doesn't just stay in one spot. Look at when this twig is snapped, right? Ducky puts all of her energy conservation on one side and then it snaps back up and then apparently the tree has a mind of its own. It's not how that works! Understandably, the crocodilian's like, you know what, I'm done with this shit, I'm gonna come up and try and get you. At least I have to try and get Ducky. And while he can't keep his freaking mouth closed, Spike has had enough of his shit. <laughs> Ducky, you realize that you could have inched backwards, right? You don't weigh that much, obviously. Why were you waiting for the monster to eat you? Why didn't you just crawl backwards? We've seen you do that quite nimbly in trees before. All of a sudden now, when your life is in danger, you've forgotten everything you did before. When your life was in danger. All of a sudden, Petrie can pick her up now. Good job, Petrie. These two start fighting because Dill almost ate him, and they seem to part ways once and for all. But it's not over yet, because Dill is like, I can't see shit. And then some plesiosaur looking creature decides that he is gonna try and uh, eat something that can snap his neck. But he's much bigger. I don't think he wants to eat her. I just think he doesn't want her there. She's in his territory. But Ducky's fine. And they're like, let's go. But before then, Ducky says, I swear I heard Spike talk. And they're like, he did. And she's like, yeah, he can talk now. But he never chooses to talk ever after that. My Spike and my stories can talk. He's a little bit like Stewie from Family Guy. Anyway, they part with Tickles and head back to the Great Valley. Yeah, I hope my grandpa's still... Well, go! You're wasting time! What is the matter? What? Oh my god. It's only- they, they make a point to say that if it's too late, the flowers won't work. And he's there worrying about his grandpa. I hope he's still alive. I hope we're not too late. And then he just stands there. You have the flowers. Go to your grandfather, you freaking pencil neck. Come on, little foot. We should hurry. A daw. Littlefoot and his friends also almost died, so Migor is definitely not gonna have a problem, because she wants her husband back. She's probably thinking to herself, I'd rather sacrifice Littlefoot if I can keep having this old man dick. But anyway, he eats the flowers and seems to be doing well. Littlefoot? Grandpa? Thought. 
psych. It's really cute because the grandfather's like, yeah, I think your pedals are working. And it's very sweet until Littlefoot says this shit. I think Littlefoot's golden flowers are working. Does that mean Grandma and I won't be leaving the Great Valley after all? Littlefoot, did you only get the flowers because you were concerned about leaving the Great Valley? Well, <laughs> selfish little shit. I should have died. Littlefoot's friends take off because their parents are probably all worried about them. Littlefoot's like, yeah, I have my grandparents and I don't have to leave. At this time, Allie's herd is moving on because they don't stay one place for too long. Meet again someday. I know we will too. Just a note, Allie is slightly darker than Littlefoot. He's like a tan brown, whatever, and she's like a pinkish brown. She has blue eyes, as is normal with female characters in these movies. He has red eyes, which is normal with these Disney or cartoon characters, right? Thanks for being my friend, Sarah. Oh, he. Goodbye, Petrie. I'm gonna miss you a whole lot, too. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How did they miss this? Hold on. Okay, so everyone's laughing. And Allie, Allie. <laughs> Come on, almighty man. Allie is right over here. This is Littlefoot right over here. Red eyes. <laughs> Allie's mother comes up. Allie is down here. Littlefoot's right here. <laughs> okay, remember the difference, right? Well, goodbye. <laughs> Run that back. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know, again. I'll miss you and Sp This is what Allie looks like. Very different than Littlefoot if you look at the color palette. The most dead giveaway are her eyes and very super long eyelashes. Well, goodbye. Bye. Freaking imposter ass. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. Allie leaves, her mom takes her, and they catch up with the rest of the herd. Now that Littlefoot's grandfather's on issue, he starts remembering all the good times he had with Allie. Total crush, total crush. Understandably, never seen another long neck before, but Allie was as toxic as they come. Good grief. See what I'm talking about with the differences? Allie on the right, Littlefoot on the left, like they're clearly different. Clearly different. Poor Littlefoot. Littlefoot's grandfather is doing much better, and after he gets up feeling much better, he decides to walk, and he does like a circle all the way in front of the screen screen so we can zoom in on his backside and the movie ends i love this movie because I really didn't see Littlefoot's grandparents getting sick. I never even thought about that possibility. And we get to see other long necks besides just his grandparents. And it's really refreshing to see that. It's also interesting to see the friend dynamic and how his other friends interact with him making friends with someone else. It also shows that Littlefoot's not perfect. It shows that Allie's not perfect either. And it also focuses on characters who tell a story of a world outside of the Great Valley. Because it's easy to forget that worlds exist outside there. Even though most of my stories take place in the Great Great Valley. I don't want to spoil it because there's something else. There's another element to them that makes it really, really fun, but I don't want to spoil it. For my spade crank creature, I decided to create a Ganondial. I don't really know what these things are going to come out to be when I'm making it. I literally just put my pen or stylus to my tablet and whatever forms is whatever forms. That's how I do 98% of my drawings. So this is how this thing turned out. It's not what I expected was going to turn out this way, but it's kind of like a canine creature who got converged with reptilian creatures and Ganadile is a play on the world Ganner and Dial, which is Crocodile and Ganner. A Ganner is someone who's not particularly smart. And at first glance, that's what the Ganadial looks like. It's just this derpy looking fox creature or Sheba creature that just loops around when in fact it is quite intelligent. On its planet, Nalpura, it digs a whole bunch of 
holes or ditches that it remembers every single one it remembers exactly where they are and so it also digs them in the migratory path of the big game that it hunts so that these creatures can fall in and break their legs or their necks after it catches one of these creatures, it throws up a substance from its mouth that kind of embalms the creatures and then buries them. The embalming substance that comes out of its mouth also coats the creature so that it doesn't emit a smell as it's rotting. This allows it to store up a lot of food for the coming winters or changing seasons. Then every time it digs up its food to get it, it will cover back up that hole and put a hole somewhere else so that in case the prey catches on, it won't remember where the holes are because they'll be in a completely different spot. Also, this animal's not that OP. They're ridiculously easy to kill. There are other predators on Nalpur that hunt these creatures. This is why they can't spend that much time out in the open. Their four legs are made for traversing all types of terrain and digging. By the way, there is also a weakness. The only person who can detect their prey or the stuff that they buried is another Ganodile. I hope you guys enjoy this. I really enjoy this. It's like I'm reliving these movies all over again. I had so much fun. And yes, I will be covering the other land before times in my reviews. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Old Yuri. You ask, we answer.